Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily, but you can call me Ems. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've done any sort of filming. I actually have a brand new camera. Well, camera, it's my phone. I have a new phone. Uh, problem is I can't actually see where the, it's like, weren't there-ish, yeah. I can't actually see where the lens is when I'm sitting this far away. I have it in selfie mode so that I know <laughs> that I'm in focus, but. I'm here today to do a crafting video podcast. Yes, I watch a lot of knitting podcasts on YouTube. I think that my favorites have to be Drowning in Yarn. Um, absolutely love Caleb from Drowning in Yarn. Um, he's actually one of the big reasons I got back into knitting. Um, I don't think it's really considered a podcast, but Engineering Knits. Um, She's literally the reason I got back in I got back into knitting. I, I learned to knit when I was like very, very young for my grandmother, but I couldn't really catch on to it. I knew how to knit and purl, but I couldn't cast on and I couldn't bind off. But her um it was like Victorian washcloths pattern that she put out. Um like she rewrote the pattern into modern language and used it as a teaching tool. And that taught me so much. Um, but yeah, I watch a lot of these podcasts, uh, TL Yarn Crafts, Summer Lee Knits, all the, you know, <laughs> I am obsessed and I realized, hey, I have a YouTube channel. I haven't posted in a long time. This could be a really fun video to do, not only to show off my crafts, but also a way that I can remember my own crafts and a way that I can reinvigorate my channel. I don't know if it will actually become a series. <laughs> I'm not very good at keeping up with them, but this seems really simple. So I've kind of devised right here in my little a notebook, I have devised a sort of order that I want to go in. So let's go through this podcast together. I'm hoping it's going to be minimal on the edits and let's jump into it. I'm sorry, there's gonna be a lot of ands and uhs, ums in this one. I'm so out of practice with videos. I'm gonna put Strahd down. Baby boy, he wanted to be in here. But I'm gonna put him down. So the first category I want to have in my podcast is called Off the Needles. So the idea that here is it's not just a knitting podcast because I knit, I crochet, I sew, I cross stitch. I do all the crafts, give me fiber arts, I'm obsessed. So what I do is I want to do an off the needles, which is my finished objects or my FOs. So I'm gonna go through my knitting, crochet, embroidery, cross stitch sewing things that I have recently finished. And the first one I'm gonna show you is probably what's been bringing me the most joy for the last two weeks since I finished this project. It has been so exciting. Look at it. <laughs> it is this beautiful, twisted toadstool hat <laughs> Look, with the little mushrooms. I'm alive in this hat. I've been wearing this while working. It fits over with even with my big headphones, my big work headphones. I've been putting this on and I'm just there and I'm like on my computer and I'm just like, I'm a little mushroom. So this is by Twisted Hatter. I will link her Ravelry below as well as her Instagram below. She's got some really cool patterns, y'all. Um, obsessed. And she's got a lot of great hoods to go with the um, crochet verse um, dream surge jacket, which I'm sure if anybody else is a crocheter, you know that jacket. You've seen that jacket. You've wanted that jacket. You may have started that jacket and then abandoned that jacket <laughs> if you're like me. Um, she's got some amazing hoods that you can use in group with that and then obviously Twisted Hatter a big thing is hats. This hat is amazing. I saw this on the Of Herbs and Altars YouTube channel uh, which I recently discovered in the past six months or so uh, I, and I saw it and I needed it but I wanted it in kind of a really cute the black not black the red and white mushroom design. I live. I have not uploaded pictures to my Ravelry yet because I am 
the worst at updating my projects, but I really should buckle down and really get those projects done. So this is what has been giving me the most joy recently. But it's actually kind of hot in my room, so I'm going to take it off while we go through the rest of my finished objects. Boop. So going away from crochet, let's go on to knitting finished objects. Uh, the first one uh, was actually last year. Um, I finished this. Oh, no, no, I think I finished this in January. But I'm taking recent finished objects pretty loosely in this podcast because I've not made one before. And I want to show things off because I'm vain. <laughs> and that is my slip stravaganza. Look at this. Look at this beauteous beauty. Slip stravaganza, the 2021 mystery knit along from West Knits. Not slip stravaganza. I'm a numpty. I'm knitting this slip stravaganza right now. No, this is the shawlography. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, not editing that out. You get to see my beautiful blunders and flunders. Um, so this is my beautiful shawlography. This was my first major knitting project. This project taught me so much. I learned German short rows in here. I learned way fun ways to use slip stitches in here and in here. Welts, bobbles, brioche this was my first time working with so much texture and beauty and loveliness in knitting and like look at these little little loop parts I'm dying the one thing I wish is I wish I had made this for some beautiful beautiful like hand dyed yarns I know it would have been a little pricey but I really wish I had done it, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be in the end because I did it full on mystery. I was in on it from the day one. I ended up getting this beautiful, well, it's actually not too bad. It is a, a uh, really nice, um, like a, just a synthetic, you, you know, normal, normal synthetic from, uh, I believe it's Loops and Threads, the Michaels off-brand thing, uh, in a fingering weight and it's actually not too bad it's actually very very stretchy um I'm a very large person though so this shawl is not quite as big as I was hoping it would be other people seem to have it very very large and I don't know how they got it that way because it's kind of like this on me it, it's kind of uh like a elbow length thing but it's not too bad I actually I like it from the front but I think my favorite way to wear it has been having this in the front because this this part with the German short rows I am obsessed look at this and wear it like hipsters early 2000 style like those scarves those square scarves everyone had in the early 2000s hello do we live I live. <laughs> I love this. This is like everything. I wore it so much when I finished it. It's just been really warm <laughs> lately, especially now that I do fully work from home. So, but I'm obsessed. And brioche, I did my first ever brioche. And look, it's not even bad. It's not even I didn't die. It's only two color brioche and there was no, there's a little bit of increasing and decreasing at the beginning and ending, like uh, right here. You can see there is a little bit of increasing and decreasing, but only right here at the edge. So it wasn't too crazy. These beautiful X's situation, that was a headache. The X's part I think was the hardest part for me because I didn't have a long enough cable. So. I'm obsessed. What can I say? 100% recommend the shawlography. So my next knitting thing that I finished is the SOS, uh, the School of Sock. I'm So Basic Socks from Summerlee Knits. This is a free sock pattern with videos. So if you've never knitted socks before, you gotta get this pattern. It's free. Like it, there's no point. And I have knitted socks before, but I've only done the toe up, 
with Jenny's, Jenny's Magic Cast on, whatever it's called. I think it's that called that. And the Flegal Heel. But this is the Heel Flap and Gusset top down. Hands down prefer these socks. This was such a good pattern. This is made from, this is the Patton's um, Croy sock in just like that plain Aran color, Aran, whatever color, pretty. And then this is the beautiful, beautiful lichen and lace, uh, which is actually local to me, a well local in my province, uh, a local yarn dyer. And I'm kind of obsessed with all of her colorways. This one is called Seagrass. This is what it looks like knitted up. You're actually gonna see it later in the skein. So it will in the hank and then in a ball. So you'll be able to see it later on as well. We'll get some more view of it, but look at that. Hide me. So pretty. I love the, the way that these hand, like this dye look came out. I don't have sock blockers, so they don't look amazing, amazing here because they're all swoopy from being in the wash and having just been dried. So I'm excited to be able to put these on uh, probably tonight and walk around in them. So that's my other knit project that is finished. And I think that is all my, no, my, my next finished object is another crocheted object. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually just the uh, Loops and Threads Impeccable. It's literally, ba it, it's basically your Burnett Premium, your your Burnett Basic, your uh, Red Heart Super Saver. It's that kind of level of yarn, just held double. My next thing is from TL Yarn Crafts. I forget the name of the project, but of course I will link it below. It was a free pattern for this really cool basket. Um, it actually has like this really fun um, dangly bobbly thing at the bottom, well at the, at the top, at the opening, but I decided instead to just add a handle and I keep pillows from the couch on it. Uh, this is, um, oh, it's Burnett. Uh, it's that wool, what is it called? Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's that thick and quick. Easy, wool easy, woolies, woolies, thick and quick. I think it might be woolies, thick and quick. That might be correct. And I love this like kind of spice color. And then this is a tweed yarn that I was knitting a sweater out of, but it turns out I didn't buy enough of it. And it was discontinued. It was also a loops and threads from Michaels, but honestly, I'm kind of happy that I didn't get to finish that sweater because I think it would be too stiff. This is a really nice basket material. So we have this really nice crocheted basket from TL Yarn Crafts. So the next section from, we're going from off the needles to on the needles. So these are my current in progress projects. So I did say that I was starting the slip extravaganza, but I decided to go with a different yarn. So I'm completely frogged that. That is actually not even on needles yet because I decided I want to do a different yarn. I don't like what I was doing. So my current on the needles projects, I have another SOS I'm So Basic sock from Summerly Knits. This one is for my mom because I owe her a pair of socks. I made her a pair of socks with the normal toe up flegal heel that I usually do, but I made them too small, sadly. Uh, but they fit my partner perfectly, so he can wear those. So I gave them to my partner and I promised my mom I'd make her new socks, so I'm working on them now. This is completely done in Patton's Croy sock yarn. This is flax, the color flax. I really like this. It, Kind of is that ba that almost in that similar like base color of this. This is more silver base color, whereas this is like a nice natural gray. So I thought these were some really nice colors. I have just finished the flap and I need to turn the heel. I'm working on turning the heel now, which is why my 
needles are like this. I'm working it in Magic Loop, which is my favorite way to knit socks. Namely because I don't knit with DPNs. I hate DPNs. I don't understand them. I can't get my hands around them. I eventually want to try DPNs, but I'm thinking of trying just like a tube, just knitting a tube. Not an actual sock, but just practicing on a tube shape and seeing how that works out. But that is my current project that I'm working on for knitting. And my current sewing project, because I don't have any recent finishes for sewing. I think my last thing I finished was my corduroy walking skirt, which I finished like summer, fall last year actually. So it's been a while since I finished a sewing project. But I'm currently working on another shirt waist because I am working on making an entirely Victorian, uh, 1890s Victorian wardrobe for myself because I, in modern casual clothes, I like the kind of gothy look, but my actual favorite thing in the world is 1890s Victorian fashion. <laughs> I'm obsessed. So this is my current work in progress. It is the shirt waist. I was going for something like a fabric that Honestly, this could have existed at the time. Like this looks like a very busy fabric. So this probably would have been a cheaper fabric at the time because it's so busy. Don't mind this chalk line. Um, this is, I, I was kind of going for a 70, 1970s meets 1890s vibe because my brown corduroy walking skirt reminds me uh, so much of corduroy bell bottoms, which gave me such 70s vibes that I wanted an entire outfit that was totally 1890s meets 1970s. So we have, all we have to do, literally all I have to do is put this other sleeve in and have it. That's all I need to do. Well, um, in buttonholes and buttons. This I worked on in, on, both by hand. There's a lot of hand work in this. My first uh, blouse, my first shirt waist, I made entirely by hand, entirely hand sewn. It was my Peter Rabbit one, if you remember that from my Instagram. This is mostly machine done. Uh, so what I did by machine was I machined the body together. I machined the uh, button plackets, like these you can see right here these plackets on. I did the collar by machine, but I put the collar on by hand. I have done the the sleeve. I did I did the cuff by machine, but I hand sewed the sleeve and I hand sewed the sleeve into the arm side. So there's about probably probably stitch per stitch, there's more machine work in here, but time spent, there's more hand work in here. And I much prefer hand work if I'm going to be honest. My uh, walking skirt, my most recent one, the brown corduroy, I literally did all of those straight seams up and down by hand. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do that, but I did them by hand. So, but I, I put on the hem braid. Uh, by machine and I, my, the machine I'm currently using is from 1919. It is a really beautiful, I'm looking at it over here. It is a beautiful, beautiful Singer machine, treadle machine from 1919. My mom got it for me off of Facebook Marketplace because I had been sending her like a million of them and she was like, do you want one for Christmas? And I said, yes. And I ended up buying it from an at the time coworker's grandmother. Who to thunk it? But yes, this is my current on the needles project or on the needle should I say because I'm hand sewing the arm cyan and then I will probably hand sew the hem uh, because I'm <laughs> losing my touch when it comes to machine sewing I'm gonna be real I find I have so much more control and accuracy and much nicer look when I hand sew except when it comes to top stitching I much prefer top stitching by machine than I do by hand so like look at this collar I top stitched the collar. I don't think you can see the stitching, but this is my one, two, three, four. This is my fourth ever stand collar. 
And every time I do a stand collar, it gets better and better and better. This one, I'm gonna say it. This one is perfect. This is a, a perfect stand collar. There is nothing wrong with this girl. I mean, if anything, I would have put a stiffening layer, but this is such a stiff cotton because this is a, um, a quilting cotton. It's actually really nice and stiff in the way that I uh, did it by machine. It's very, it keep, it, the collar likes to stand up pretty nicely. So we'll see how that stands up because my Victorian clothes, I don't put in the washing machine, I spot wash and that seems to work out fine for me. So this is what we need to do. The other sleeve is literally ready, like it's right here. Um, I did all the seams um, French, I did French seams. So this is the French seam here. It has a, a gather. I run all my gathers by hand because I hate using machine stitch gathers. So I have that. The sleeve head is fully gathered together. Like I've got the gathering stitches ran. I've got two lines of gathering stitches run through the sleeve head here. And I've got these pins to notify uh, the halfway point, like the, the top of the seam, the front, the back, and quarter points so that I can evenly gather it. And it is inside out because I need to put it on uh, right side, no, wrong sides together and then right sides together because I'm doing French seams. So it's inside out so that I can put it on the inside of the shirt and sew it in place. And look how big this sleeve is because they are big, beautiful leg of mutton sleeves, the Gigo sleeve, what have you. I live. Big sleeves, not egos, as my Instagram and Facebook header says. <laughs> I am very excited for this to be finished uh, because I want to move on to some more Things like, for example, the one of the biggest things I want is a tea gown or a house dress. Something I can just throw on and wear while I'm working, while I'm lounging, whatever. And I'm hoping to also make the couch potato corset. So, I believe that Adelaide Beeman White has made the couch potato corset. And I think that Engineering Knits has also made the couch potato corset. So, I'll link their channels below. Uh, hopefully, I can remember to do that because I'm not that great at it. We are already literally 22 minutes in. I'm definitely gonna have to edit a little bit. We'll see. Uh, but this next section is called Stash Dive. So Stash Dive is when I want to feature a yarn or fabric from my stash. And this is to go with the next section, which is new acquisitions so new yarn fabric floss notions whatever i want to talk about currently i have no new acquisitions that i would consider that new so i'm going to give you two stash dives today so the first one is the lichen and lace yarn that i used to make my socks i have one more lovely hank of it i have no idea what i'm going to make with this lichen and lace and it's the color seagrass this is what it looks like in the hank, and this is what it looks like in the cake. I caked it up, and this is what remains of, this is literally, I have this much left after making these socks from a hank. That is a generous hank, my friends. So this is what it looks like hanked up, not hanked up, balled up. So when I bought it in the hank, I really was seeing the silver color and the beautiful kind of ready maroon and I'm not gonna lie a little little macabre of me I bought it because it reminded me of blood spatter <laughs> and it doesn't look like blood spatter when it up but it reminded me of blood spatter so that's why I actually bought this colorway but when I balled it up I was very surprised to see a lot of green tones coming out oh. You can kind of see right here, there's a little bit of green tone, a little bit of green tone here. So it, it shocked me, it amazed me that there were so many green tones and I thought it was so beautiful. So that is actually why I've decided to show you in the Hank and the Bowl when possible. Uh, my next one, I'm so excited I got my hands on this. 
it is Lola Bean Yarn Co. in the colorway Sugar Skull, I believe. Sugar Skulls with a Z. And this is the Bean Sprout 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. It is fingering weight. This is also fingering weight and it, I think it is also 8020. Yes, it's 8020 sock super weight. I missed the pre-order for this and I was so mad at myself. I am not usually a neon lover, but this combo, this combo looks amazing <laughs> and I wanted it so bad. And I was just browsing Marketplace as you do one night. I'm just going through Marketplace Knows Me. It shows me all the yarn and someone had two hanks of this. Two hanks for sale because she bought them and ended up not using them and decided someone else might want it and boy did I. I bought both and this is what it looks like balled up. How loud and beautiful is this yarn. I don't know what I'm making with this. Probably socks. I have some more Summerly Knit sock patterns, so I might try out some of her other ones. Maybe something with like a lacy detail would be really fun. I am obsessed. <laughs> so this was a really good acquisition. This was great. And I've had it for a few months now and I have not made anything with it yet because I've had so many other things on my needles. But I'm very excited to make maybe like some summer spring socks. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's so good. It's so good. So after new acquisitions, I wanted to talk about media. Let's talk media. So first, I want to talk about what book or audiobook I'm currently reading or listening to. So I actually tend to have one of each on the go at each time. So because I have my trusty e-reader, my Kobo, this is probably, I use this a lot. But I also recently went back to my public library and I'm very excited because I am currently reading Eclipse from the Twilight Saga. I read Twilight in grade 10, hated it and got mad about it and then didn't read any of the other ones <laughs> so uh to be fair okay as a child <laughs> i was a little holier than thou i mean a lot holier than thou and i was like i don't like this so i think it's stupid and i think it's dumb so i'm not gonna like it meanwhile me obsessed with harry potter as a child as like a teen preteen and teen so I decided to try reading the Twilight series and approach it from a let teen girls like what they like and instead of getting weird about how obsessive they are or whatever, just like let teen girls like what they like, read it with an open mind. I've actually been enjoying it and I'm going to be watching the movies for the first time after I finish the whole series. So we'll see. I've got this at the library. The audiobook, I literally just finished it before starting this podcast, and I'm surprised at how really good the book is. The Secret Garden, hello? I was obsessed with the older movie, the like 1970 whatever movie, I think it was. I think it was the 70s. I was obsessed with that movie as a kid, and for some reason I always thought that the book wasn't that good. Like I didn't I didn't read it because I thought it wasn't gonna be that good. I listened to the Audible original, read by Carrie Hope Fletcher used to be obsessed with her YouTube channel. Um, so good. And she does the Yorkshire accent and speaks like the way that they write the, the Yorkshire accent in the book. Such a magical experience to listen to that. That was amazing. I finished it on a walk just before starting this video. And that is what I'm currently listening or reading. A podcast I'm currently listening to Mm, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I am a podcast person. So I'm trying to think of what I want to shout out here. I think the thing that's been giving me the most laughs and cries recently has been Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. <laughs> I've been listening to that for probably almost a year now. I'm 
almost finished season one, like their first campaign, because they recently started their new campaign. I'm getting close and I just finished the part where they meet Ron's dad or where they final not meet him, but when they finally kind of start their, their initial face off with him. Tears, <laughs> tears. But never has been there been so many tears at a podcast that there has also been so many laughs at a podcast. That show is ridiculous. And I may be in love with Beth May at this point. Uh, yeah, that is my podcast wreck for this time. TV show or movies? I used to be a huge movie person, but I have not watched any movies lately. I'm gonna be real. I've not watched any movies lately and TV. I've not watched any like new TV in a long time. So I think my TV show, I just started rewatching Downton Abbey again. I'm obsessed. It's my fourth rewatch. I love Downton Abbey. I love it so much. I am on season three of my current rewatch. So I'm about to be even more heartbroken. <laughs> because uh, we just lost Sybil in it. No oh, spoilers if you not watched Downton Abbey. Um, love it. That's my current TV show watch. Uh, music or playlist recommendation. I recently have been listening to Bardcore a lot on my when I'm in the car. So I'd recommend finding a Bardcore playlist on Spotify. Like any of them pretty good pretty good I'm just saying sorry my partner's on a <laughs> if you hear my partner they're on ESO with a guild doing game play game do game on the internet you know <laughs> and speaking of game video games so anyone who knows me <laughs> knows that I have a slight the sims problem <laughs> I'm obsessed with the sims you know so i've been playing a lot of the sims 4 i finally got my hands on 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 um uh oh realm of magic and i finally get to play with spellcasters i'm so excited ah! i'm making a little spellcaster family and i want to have like a witch and she's got like this kind of fairy look to her and i'm making I want to get her a partner who's going to be like a mad scientist so that can be like a secret basement with like their witchcraft stuff and with like the science stuff and I think it'll be so fun. So that's what I'm doing and I'm very excited. Um, the uh, other video game that I really really like is Stardew Valley. I've been repl I've been starting a new farm recently that I've been really enjoying. I also play Elder Scrolls Online, you know. I don't know. I just enjoy playing the video games. I don't call myself a gamer. I'm not very good at them, but I do enjoy the occasional a video game. So that's my media section. I'm sorry. This is like unhinged. I'm just really excited to be filming again. So I'm talking a lot <laughs> and I'm unhinged. So the next section I want to do is a highlight. I want to highlight one creator or business every podcast. I think I'm trying to think of who I want to highlight. I've actually talked about a lot of people already. Obviously, <laughs> I've talked about a lot of people. I think that I'm going to highlight. This is so difficult. I think I'm going to highlight typical bliss. Tiffany Liu, who very I don't know if that's how you say last name. I'm very sorry. Um, she has a knitting podcast as well on YouTube and she got very popular for a lot of recreations, but now she's recently been putting out her own knitting patterns, which I'm amazed by. I don't think I could put out a knitting pattern. I can do crochet patterns, but knitting patterns, I don't think I'm ready to make my own knitting patterns. So go give Tiffany Lou some love from me or from you, whatever, to her YouTube channel. She also streams on Twitch every week, and she also has a her own website, Typical Bliss, with her patterns. And she also just started dyeing yarn, did her first uh, pre-order, which pre-order's over, I'm sorry. This is coming out too late for you if you wanted to pre-order any of her yarn. But it looked so pretty. I missed the pre-order myself, but it looked really pretty, but not any of 
the colors I would have used, they're very pastel, very classic, would go great with a lot of neutrals. I'm a little more loud, <laughs> you might say. Um, I'm, a, I'm like a loud or a neutral. Pastels, not as much. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed my first craft podcast. I was trying to think of like a fun name for it, but I can't think of something because it's so many different things. It's not a knitting podcast or whatever. So I thought about like, oh, Sunday crafter noon, but I feel like someone's definitely done that before. If you can think of any title for this, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. Don't forget to be awesome. Uh, turning into Kara. I'm sorry, Kara. I'm turning into you. Cute witch 772. My friend Kara. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to YouTube anymore. I'm broken. Kaka. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe.